The commercial aircraft EF-42, piloted by William and Daniel, departs Dallas for London on a pleasant, sunny day. The journey proceeds without incident, but a little while later, the flying instruments start acting strangely. When William phones ground control to ask for assistance, they are told to continue flying because the skies are clear. Only a moment of relief is felt by the pilots when they see a massive storm directly ahead of them. Even though ground control is certain that the storm didn't exist five seconds earlier, William warns the passengers that there will be some turbulence because they have no choice but to fly straight into it. As the pilots maneuver through the violent storm, which appears to be glowing strangely, the plane begins to shake violently. The pilots are astonished to see that the sky are entirely dark, as if night had descended in an instant, but the plane soon stabilizes and begins to fly properly once more. William tries to reassure the passengers by telling them this is only a humorous phenomenon that occurs when flying over the Bermuda Triangle. Even still, the passengers become concerned when they discover that their computers and phones are disconnected. The majority of the flight instruments in the cabin are also down, and William is unable to communicate with ground control. However, the pilots believe that the radar's continued operation is sufficient to continue for the time being. In the meantime, the flight attendants distribute the drinks and reassure everyone that the turbulence was typical. Cameron strikes up a conversation with two men who just so happen to be historians, and finds out they are headed to London to examine some freshly uncovered military artifacts. In his notebook, an elderly man is also recording every detail of his experiences. It's concerning that the pilots are unable to locate any other aircraft on their radar after a short while, as this could indicate the storm blew them off track. William decides to fly the plane in a loop in order to find someone, but even after descending, they don't recognize any location. Suddenly something appears on their radar, and at first they think it's a storm, but the truth is more disturbing. It's a bunch of fighter planes bombarding a city as if they were at war. The passengers immediately start panicking as they see buildings blowing up under the plane and fire all over the area. But the historians can't help noticing something curious. The pilots have no idea of what to do but before they can discuss options, they suddenly see some fighter planes surrounding them. These fighters are prepared to fire at them, but the pilots are able to swiftly steer the aircraft away from them and upward in the sky because of the radar. As the passengers grow agitated and insist on explanations, Cameron tries her best to reassure them. After threatening to tie Michael up, another flight attendant persuades him to behave. Michael is excessively disrespectful and belligerent, even going so far as to grab Cameron. William decides to go down again in an attempt to locate them after attempting in vain to get in touch with ground control. Daniel is first concerned that they might come under attack once more. But William reminds him that they are running low on gasoline and that they must find a quick solution. Unaware that Michael is following them and listening in on their chat, the historians persuade Cameron to accompany them to visit the pilots at that precise moment by suggesting that they might know something. The pilots are informed by the historians that the fighter aircraft they had witnessed were part of the Nazi Luftwaffe and had not been produced since 1945. Despite the historian's assumption that the plane has lost all signals, William chooses to give them another chance despite his initial lack of interest in them and attempt to throw them out. According to the historian's theory, a plane has returned to 1940 and is currently in the midst of World War II. If the anomaly that brought them here was caused by something else, then they need to find another plane that can return them. William tells them to return to their seats and urges them to keep their wild ideas to themselves because he still finds time travel to be absurd. Before they can see him, Michael also dashes back to his seat. When Cameron walks by, he tries to grab her again, but Cameron is flirtatious enough for him to let go. Following her departure, Michael starts listening intently to the historians working behind him, as they try to piece together the situation with the help of their books and calculations. The pilots then descend once more in an attempt to find any radio signals. Luckily, they are successful this time and manage to get in touch with Nigel, a British soldier. Because it is difficult to get a radio signal from a jet that high, Nigel believes they are spies tampering with him. The pilots plead for assistance, and when Nigel is still perplexed, William asks what the date is. Nigel responds by confirming the historian's hypothesis, which states that they are on June the 17th, 1940. They attempt to persuade Nigel of their circumstances, but it is clear that they are absurd. Fortunately, the historians return to the cabin with additional information, and they are able to speak with Nigel. Nigel is shocked to learn that they have located themselves roughly, and that they passed the site of the British ship Lancastria sinking, as that vessel is believed to be still in service. Nigel makes a commitment to call back, 
and resolves to ask his superior if the ship's narrative is accurate. Michael borrows the historian's books while they are gone and eventually connects the dots. Enraged, he gets up and informs the other travelers of what is happening, claiming that they can use the knowledge in the book to murder Hitler and end World War II. A few guys believe him and consent to assist him in taking over the cockpit, but the majority of passengers laugh him off and don't take him seriously. Fortunately, there are two American soldiers flying with them, and they intervened right away, clarifying that, regardless of the motivation, taking over a cockpit constitutes terrorism. Even the flight attendants get involved in the brawl that results from this, and after a few blows are traded, the soldiers subdue the hijackers and force them to return to their seats before threatening to behave themselves with everyone else. Nigel contacts them a few minutes later, and learns that their information regarding Lancastria was accurate, in fact. It assisted them in saving many lives, so he begins to trust them. He does, however, also identify a few missions that took place in a distinct historical account from what historians know about the conflict, indicating that they occurred in a different era. Sadly, William and the historians can only provide an approximate location, so before Nigel can assist them in landing the plane, they must ascertain their precise location. Daniel switches on their lights to make themselves visible to the British forces, but the Germans are listening in on their chat and are issuing commands. As soon as a number of fighter jets approach and begin fire, William utilizes his aviation experience to avoid all of the bullets while the other passengers scream in panic. First, he turns out the lights. He abruptly drops the plane as the bullets are too much to bear, allowing it to fall for a short while, before raising it again just in time to avoid hitting the ground. The Germans pursue him, but the majority of their outdated aircraft fall to the ground since they lack the same maneuvering capability. Daniel is injured and the jet has several holes in it when two of the planes, regrettably, manage to escape and fire at the cabin. The flight attendants hurry to close any gaps and use their training in first aid to treat Daniel while William skillfully flies them out of enemy range. Cameron talks William into talking to the other passengers, so they can cooperate since he's afraid about running out of fuel. The damage the gunfire has done to their landing wheels, and the fact that he can't get in touch with Nigel. A superior informs Nigel that they will blow up the jet to prevent it from falling into the hands of the Germans if he does not hear from his enigmatic friends very soon. William proceeds to speak with the passengers in order to ultimately admit the truth after dropping Daniel off at the controls. He says he's doing everything he can to land the jet, but he'll need assistance replacing the landing wheel because it was damaged in the most recent attack. After revealing that she is an engineer, Teresa agrees to go, encouraging a handyman named Hector to sign up as well. William leads his new squad to the tail of the aircraft, where happily Teresa finds the issue fast and, with Hector's assistance, starts to fix it. As they are having a talk, two German planes return and launch an attack. This time, they launch a missile, but it explodes to near and obliterates every window in the aircraft. William utilizes the radar to track the enemy while the passengers are in a panic. This allows him to execute some wild maneuvers that result in the German planes colliding with one another. The historians then have an idea. They ought to take out the plane's radar and give it to Nigel so he can use it to direct them to a secure location. It defies logic that they haven't had this technology before. Perhaps the plane was sent back in time to address that problem. The plane begins plummeting rapidly as a missile strikes a turbine at that precise moment. The pilots eventually succeed in getting it to function once more, and they communicate with Nigel to decide where to drop the radar. When it turns out that the missile was fired by the British, Nigel orders his supervisor to put out the fire and grab the radar. Everyone pitches in to make the package on the plane. Couple people give in their USB batteries, and the elderly man says he bought several toy parachutes for his grandchildren and offers them to the cause. After that, they attach the radar to parachute and wrap it in a bag in several outfits. They hurl it off the plane as soon as they get to the proper location and notify Nigel about it. But sadly, the Nazis hear about it too and show up before. A couple British army soldiers arrive just as a German soldier starts climbing a tree to get to the gift and a shooting breaks out. Luckily, the British have the upper hand and they kill every German one by one to successfully recover the cargo. More Nazi planes are dispatched to pursue William's aircraft, and this time they shoot the side of the aircraft, making a large hole through which a few passengers fall. Even though the aircraft is trembling a lot, William manages to steer it clear of danger by making another audacious maneuver. Nigel sets up the radar as soon as he gets it, and begins directing William to fly in the correct direction. Even though the Nazis are closing in on them, Nigel sends British planes to fight back just as they are ready to begin fire, allowing the commercial plane to continue flying safely. Nigel notices a big shadow on the radar that doesn't appear to be an aircraft at all, 
As the plane approaches, they discover it's a storm that like the one that led them to this location. William chooses to fly through it, in the hopes that it will return them to the present. Even though it is a dangerous maneuver, given that they are running out of gasoline nonetheless. William and Daniel board the plane during the storm after bidding Nigel farewell, and encouraging the other passengers to hold on. Despite experiencing a great deal of shaking, they are relieved to be back in the present. They appear to be flying above Berlin, but fortunately ground control gets in touch with them right away, and offers them an empty runway for a landing. The pilots safely land the aircraft after pushing it to its limits. The passengers got off the plane right away, relieved to be home. William discovers the elderly guy still seated and writing in his notebook, which contains a map labeled, the radar system, that saved Europe, and looks like the path they just took. It is revealed that the old man's name is Nigel as he shuts this book, indicating that he is the one who saved them in 1940. 